Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we're looking at keep keeping functional code private. So whenever you are creating a website, keep the functional code in a separate file. So you should have a, uh, a file that contains functions, functions or classes. So these files that have functions or classes should be in a separate folder all the time. They should never be in the same folder as your index page. They should be separate. And then do not put functions in your index page, for example. The index page should be free of sensitive functions. You should just call those functions in that particular file to use them there, but keep them in a separate file, which you are going to include in the index file. So this is where we, um, where is this? Yes, so once you do that, then now you can create a system where the directory listing uh, can be avoided. So let's see a simple example of this. So I have a index page here, All right? So here I have something like uh, echo, index just something simple like that but then i have a function so the function here let me go to security and create a, a new folder so i'm going to that folder and create a new one so this one is going to be called the private folder like that okay and then once that folder is private let me create a new one new folder and this one will be called the public folder like this. Okay, so private, public. So now let me just open the contents of this. <clears throat> so now as you can see, I have a private and public folder. So it's very important to create two folders for your system. In here, in the public folder, that's where you put your index page. So I'm going to move my index page in there. Okay, now I'm going to create a new file right inside private new file and this one i'm going to save it as functions.php okay there we go so in here i'm just going to create a simple function a php function i'm going to do that function uh uh i don't know i'll call it hey like that for lack of a better and then i'll go it will echo just the text here just like we were doing in the index page here we're echoing something so let me close this file since it's no longer here i've moved it to public okay so here what i will do is i will include the functions.php now in order for me to include it i have to go two directories back like this a, a directory back if i do this it means i'm in the same directory dot slash but if i put dot dot slash like this it means a directory above the one i am in so i'm in the public directory right now and i'm going outside into security then i want to go into the private so here i'll say private and then here, I'm just going to say functions.php. So include. Okay, so we've included that one in our index page. Now, back in the browser here, you will see that instead of it displaying a website, it's displaying the directory listing here. So I can see what files are in here, right? But if I go into the public here, you see that it loads the page, the index page which is this, and I didn't get any errors, so this was correct. So if in here I do run the function like this, uh, I just say, hey, like that, and refresh, it's going to run the function. So the function has actually run, even though it's all the way back there into the private uh, directory. Now, you might be asking, what is the advantage of doing this? Well, let me explain when you upload your web uh, file 
when you upload your website on the server the server will ask you which one is the landing folder which folder should it go to when somebody types www.yourwebsite.com okay so once you're asked and you set that folder you're going to set that folder to the public folder so it's going to be something like this something like www.yourdomain.com like this okay this is how it's going to look like now once somebody types this they're going to land in the public folder now because of that they can't go a directory behind because look here what we are doing we are in the public directory but we are able to go one directory up into the private folder and then get a file but this is only possible when it is done by the server itself so this is why the server can manage to include this file because it's on its own file system however somebody who is browsing just typing this cannot do this because if they tried and typed dot dot slash like this it's just not going to work they can't go a directory back okay so for that reason your private folder here is very safe for manipulation to the public unless somebody is a very good hacker then they might be able to do that this is why we add extra security apart from that so just by changing the folder structure like this you have added extra security to your code okay so let's see what uh, other points here so this is the one where it's private and public folders now the first one which we have skipped over is avoid directory listings so if we come back here for a second and I go back you see that there's this listing here going on in this folder okay so now if I do go into the private folder I still get a directory listing like this so what happens is as servers are create uh, by default if there's no index file in there in this folder if this folder doesn't have an index.php or index.html or home.php or home.html if those two do not exist it's just going to show the directory listing like this now this is not good because if somebody browsed into your folder like this they'll see everything so this is why when we keep folders like this, where public and private, uh, we can avoid such things, right? But if you had a folder, let's say inside uh, public here, on the private side, we're not so worried about it because people might not be able to go there. But what about if you are in the public folder because you still have to keep all your images in the public or your CSS in the public and all your JavaScript in the public folder. So somebody can still browse to that particular folder and see those things. So how do you protect against that? Well, to protect against that, what we do is we add an index page because if you notice, every time there's an index page in a particular folder, that index page will run so all we need to do is go into the private right click create new file and just save this as index.php now keep in mind this is not the landing page this is just a folder on our system and we are putting an empty php file it has nothing in there just empty and now if i refresh the page you see that it runs the php file and so i don't get that directory listing okay so this is the same thing you would do if you are in the public folder here and you create a new folder for images for example say images and then let's say you had uh, inside here new file let me save here uh, my file.txt I'm just saving a random file in the images folder here so that if I come back here and go to public you see here I am in public here it runs the index page because this is a landing page for my website but if I navigate to images like so maybe for some reason I know the uh, the file system I click there I get a directory listing like this in the images folder now to avoid this it means every single uh, 
every single folder on my system should have a default index.php file for no reason, just uh, for it to be able to fight back in case somebody tried to see what's in there. So I can copy this, go back here, and then go to public and inside images, and then I can paste my PHP file there. Okay, so if I now refresh this, you see, I don't see any images in here, even though I am in the images folder. So this is how you can protect uh, sensitive files on your system. Another way to do it, let's go to the private part here. Let me delete the index page here. So I have deleted that index page. So if I go back to private here, I will see this, right? So what I could do inside the private folder is create a new file, save that. I'll save this file as .htaccess. Save it there. And then once I do that, if I come back here and refresh, nothing has changed. But if I type minus indexes like so, okay, in the htaccess file, oh, internal server error there. Yeah, so every time you see internal server error, it just means uh, there's an error that happened uh, either with your PHP and it's not allowed to display errors or it's uh, happened with your HT access file. So in our case, this is uh, indices here, but we have to tell it that this is an option. So I'm going to say options minus indices there. So we're telling it not to show anything. So then it says forbidden like this. You don't have permission to access this resource. Now, so what some people do is they create a password system using the HT access file where you can enter a password in order to view the files. But I highly uh, discourage doing that because you may misplace your password and somebody will gain access to your server. That is never a good idea. So don't do that. Just cancel everything and make sure it's just not readable. So this is much better forbidden and we forget about it or you can put forbidden as well then also put an index.php file there just to be safe okay and then here the last one the last point is that always use php extensions okay so there are times when for example you want to keep your database um, settings okay somewhere so if I go to my index.php here, I may want to include a file that has db stuff in there. So I may say include like this. Actually, I should have just duplicated this like so. So private db, or maybe it's the config. Now it's very tempting to just say, okay, the config file may just contain some passwords and uh, stuff. Then maybe I'll save it as a TXT file like this. Okay. So people still can do this. You can use a text file, which has uh, maybe configuration data. You can put JSON data in there and then save it as JSON. Maybe you save it like config.json. Now, this is not a very good idea because a JSON file does not, if somebody has access to a JSON file, let's, let's try that real quick. If I go to my private or just inside public here, I'll right click and create a new file. And uh, I will just do this. I want to create just a JSON, simple JSON uh, file here. And I'll say, uh, name John something like this and then I'll put age uh, 20 like that put a comma there okay I'll save this as uh, John dot Jason okay so that's a JSON file there now if I go to my browser here and I'm inside public. Okay. Uh, obviously, that file does not exist. Let me remove this here. 
this was the wrong thing to try refresh okay there we go now if i decide i know there's a file called john uh, john dot json there and try to open it you see what happens here uh, the file is read in plain text i can see what's inside here name john age 20 etc so don't keep your sensitive data in json files because somebody can if they do get access to your system they can just open them in the browser and they'll see the content now but instead imagine you save this data inside a different um uh, let me say save this i'm going to save this as john.php okay john.php there's john.json john.php so i'll put php tags here and then i'll just say um something like name is equal to john like that and then age is equal to 20 like so okay so i've saved my data as a php file here with valid php like this so i could save this json data in a string instead so let me copy this so that i try to replicate what i've done here i'm just going to say json is equal to and then do a single quotes here because there are double quotes in there and then do that so i've saved the same data inside a php file and the other one in a json so let's see what happens when i try to open the php version instead i'll say dot php john dot php open you see nothing is visible and why is that that's because the server is automatically going to process php files and not display the data it contains so this is another way to keep your data safe so no matter what you do always always use php extensions they are always safer than using other formats like json txt and so on All right so i hope you have learned something on how to keep your data private your functional code private i will see you in the next video